When you're in my situation, there's no plan B. You know, it's music or we sell crack. Cause that's what we did before we did music. There's nobody in control of me. Like I do what I want to do. So I'm deciding to fuck your life. I'ma fuck your life up. For fun. There's a few times. I'm, I, this is not new. I do this all the time. I had a list of niggas. Rick Ross at all. Nigga told me he gave me a pass. Well, don't give me no pass, man. I don't. I don't deserve passes. I did, I'm a fucked up nigga. You should do something to me. You 50 Cent's career has progressed from the gangster you just saw to a business mogul that now wears turtlenecks and well-tailored suits. The bartender, look. Let me get 100 bottles of Hennessy, right? 500 bottles of tequila and 600 bottles of Branson Kanye to put it on his tab. Put it on his tab. You know what this is? It's 50 Cent. No, no. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's on your tab. On not, his tab, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, no, I'm not paying for that. No, he's definitely paying, yeah, he paying for it right here. <laughs> However, before Curtis James Jackson became the business mogul, or before he became the rapper 50 Cent, there was Boo Boo. And he is the man whose story I will be telling you today. Boo Boo wasn't interested in board meetings or booking studio sessions and making music. Instead, Boo Boo was interested in one thing, white powder. He wasn't using, but the young 50 Cent was born just a few years before the crack epidemic began. Enterprising dealers went further, developing a form of cocaine that was even cheaper and packed a lot more punch. This is it. The drug so powerful it will empty the money from your pockets, make you sell the watch off your wrist, the clothes off your back. Or kill your mother. Yep, that's what we're saying. On the streets of New York, it's called crack, and the deals go down quickly. You've just witnessed. 50 had a very difficult childhood. His father was not in the picture. In fact, he never met his father at all. Back and forth with his father. And I said, why well, I don't got no father, mom. And she said, because you were special. He was born to the Immaculate Conception. Like Jesus, boy. Instead, his mother, Sabrina, gave birth to him when she was only 15 years old. Sabrina Jackson was the one who named 50 Boo Boo. 50 Cent was born and raised in South Jamaica, Queens. He lived in an apartment with his grandparents on South Road, a few miles away from Baisley Pond Park. While 50's family seemed like every other one, his mother was actually active in the streets as a drug dealer. His mom did enough to ensure that her son never missed his father. With the money she made from selling crack, Sabrina was able to shower Boo Boo with gifts, clothes, and anything else he wanted. 50 Cent stated that his mom was very protective of him, as she was basically being his mom and his dad. When 50 got beat up in school, his mother put his toys in a sock for him to use as a makeshift weapon. 50 Cent even stated that he was more scared of his mom than he was of people who beat him up in school. Unfortunately, 50 Cent never got to enjoy his mother's company for long. 50's mom later moved to Long Island, and after this, he no longer saw his mother as frequently as he used to. After some time, Sabrina didn't show up for family visits, and her folks could sense something was wrong, so they decided to go to her home. We knew something was wrong. We went over to her apartment to see what was going on. Sabrina was found dead lying in her apartment. 50 stated that someone put something in her drink, then turned the gas on, and by the time Sabrina was found, her body was already decomposed. When I went in the house, I found her laying dead. Someone put something in her drink, and then they turned the gas on. She spent a few days in the space that she was in after she passed away, so her body was all... Many believe that Sabrina Jackson was murdered by a rival drug dealer. 50 Cent's mother was killed when she was only 23 years old, while her son was just eight years old. Losing your mother under such circumstances would do a number on anyone, and this pretty much shaped 50 Cent's outlook about the streets. And with his mother no longer alive to provide his needs, Boo Boo now had to fend for himself. He already had a taste of what the hood was capable of at a very young age, so by the time he got into the streets, he knew just how dangerous it was. This was when 50 jumped off the porch. He wanted the good life like everyone else, but the only semblance of success around him at the time were the drug dealers in the hood. South Jamaica, Queens, where 50 grew up, was one of the hottest drug spots in the city. During this period in the late 80s, Southside was the epicenter of New York's crack epidemic. And because of this, South Jamaica became one of New York's bloodiest drug battlegrounds. Some people even referred to South Jamaica, Queens as Crack Alley. 
They had various drug dealers like Lorenzo Fat Cat Nichols, who had about 300 members in his crew, the Furtado brothers, Wall Ghost Corley, and of course, Supreme, whom 50 Cent will end up having a detailed history with. All these men ran the streets of South Jamaica, Queens at that time. These drug dealers were the ones who had all the money, the cars, the nice jewelry, and the cool crib to live in. So of course the young 50 wanted all of these things and he saw these men as role models. He saw the drug dealers with a lot of money and in flashing clothes and he wanted to emulate them. Nice places to stay, nice cars, nice jewelry. They appeared to have the actual life that I wanted. 50 Cent followed his mother's footsteps and he started selling drugs at the age of 12. And even though he was just a young cat in the streets, everyone knew who 50 Cent was. 50 resumed work and got his hands dirty from 3 to 6 p.m. every day. If you asked 50's grandparents, they would tell you their beloved grandson was at the after-school program. But 50 was actually hustling in the streets. From their perspective, they were helping me. They go, well, I'm gonna give you this. You know what to do with this? And it's three and a half grand. So from three to six, when my grandparents thought I was in the after-school program, I was hustling. Tony Yayo stated that 50 Cent was that 12-year-old who was hustling and bumping shoulders with 17-year-olds. But make no mistakes, 50 didn't look out of place, and he held his own pretty well. I know 50 is hustling his whole life. That's how I know him. It's booby. When he was 12, he was on the block with like guys that were 17, 18. Everybody knew boo, boo Like, what is this little kid doing out here with the wolves? 50 Cent was also known as an angry and troublesome kid. This anger came from losing his mother at a very young age and never having a father. And since Boo Boo knew he had to survive on the streets all by himself, he began taking boxing lessons so he could defend himself and ensure no one fucks with him. 50 began boxing at the age of 11. His boxing lessons were paid for by Black Just, who was a member of the Supreme Team. With the skills 50 learned at the gym, he terrified a lot of people in the streets, and the young 50 Cent was allegedly known for knocking out a lot of older guys. This helped him to always have the upper hand whenever he was involved in any confrontation. Fight, everybody respected him. Um, and if you didn't, he would make you. To further defend himself, 50 got his hands on a gun. And I used it, I used it a bunch of times. I ain't hit a lot of people with it, but I used that because they knew I would shoot it. It changed their whole perspective on me based on that. I saw his lifestyle start to change. When he was in the house with us, we saw Curtis, but I've heard stories on how aggressive he was in the street. 50 Cent caught his first offense when he was arrested for bringing drugs into school when he was 14 years old and sent to rehab. I never really indulged in the usage of drugs, but they teach you like the 12 steps and I had to kind of act as if to get out of it. It works if you work it, so work it. Hi, my name is Curtis Jackson and I'm an addict. Three years later, 50 was arrested again. This time, the cops found heroin, crack, and $15,000 cash all in his apartment. This could have seen him sentenced to nine years in prison, but because he was a teenager, he was sent to military boot camp for six months. This boot camp was meant to teach him discipline, but 50 states that the camp made him a sharper and stronger criminal. I'm a part of the success rate of the shop program. It works! It works! It works! You see, it depends on how you look at things. I slipped back into my ways after the actual program, but it worked for me because I've never been incarcerated since. However, 50 also realized that pushing weight could only end up two ways. He ends up behind bars or he would be killed even before he became 50 Cent. This is when Boo Boo decided he wanted to make music. When you're in my situation, there's no plan B. You know, it's music or we sell crack. Cause that's what we did before we did music. 50 Cent first signed with Jam Master Jay in 1996. Jay recognized 50's raw talent and helped him improve his skills by teaching him how to write hooks and structure a song. Two years after signing with Jam Master Jay, 50 wasn't satisfied with where his career was. So he eventually signed a new deal with Columbia Records instead. He was given $65,000 in advance, but he couldn't do anything with the money. 50 paid $50,000 to get out of the contract with Jam Master Jay Records, $10,000 to the attorney that negotiated the deal between himself and Columbia Records, and he was left with $5,000. I got $65,000 in advance from Columbia. $50,000 went to Jam Master Jay to negotiate the release from Jam Jay Records. 
$10,000 went to the attorney that drew the contracts up between me and Columbia and the release between me and Jam Master J. They left me with $5,000. 50 Cent was left with $5,000 and his album wasn't going to be released until a year after. So he knew he couldn't survive with that five grand he had, especially because he already had his first child by this time. So 50 Cent went back to what he did before he started making music. He started pushing peas again. And I was out there for over a year before the record came out. So I was back selling crack. How else you gonna provide, for, how else will I provide for myself and then be on call and, and, and able to be in the studio whenever the company called me to action. But at this point, 50 stated that he was only selling drugs to help him survive until his debut album was released. 50 Cent's debut album was meant to be Power of the Dollar. However, this album Power of the Dollar, even till this day, remains unreleased and will probably never be released. This is because 50 Cent got caught up in the beef with Ja Rule and Supreme. 50 almost lost his life to this beef as he was shot nine times, but fortunately for him, none of the bullets hit any of his vital organs. 50 won this beef as the man who shot him, Daryl Hamobam, is dead, while Supreme, who paid for the hit, is now spending life in prison. Did you ever find out who did it? Yeah, I, I knew who did it shortly after. Yeah. yeah. And they are now where? Oh, the guy who actually shot me is dead. And the guy who paid him got life in jail. Got life in jail. And for Ja Rule, let's just say 50 is a TV mogul who is now building his own TV studios and even did a world tour recently. But for Ja, let's just say his career had a good run. Do you think, because you say now you could say, in, in hindsight you could say yes, well, we well, took an L. Then. Yeah, we took an L. But listen, the thing about it is when you're going through it, you, you know, you're going through it. So yeah. you got to think ways. But I, I, I'll, I'll take you back to we was in my office, me and Rule, right? We in the office and Flex was about to play in the club, right? <laughs> so Flex plays in the club. That record was so dope. I looked at yeah. Rule, like I looked at Rule, I said, yo, <laughs> I have a major problem. Yeah, yeah. Did you really say that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And see, now we're in such a thing, and I'm happy that we can talk about it. Man. Yeah, we took we, we took the L. We took the L. But you know what? People take L's. It's not the L. It's what you do, and you but keep swinging and keep...